Welcome back to Bedanza Disc Golf. Today we're gonna go play with my own bag. We haven't done a ton of that, and I'm a little bit nervous, honestly. It's pretty chilly out, but I've added some new discs that I'm sure you'll be able to see because we're gonna go play a tags match at Bird's Nest Disc Golf Course. It's honestly one of my favorite courses because it's almost always windy, so you don't really know what to expect. Got my putting putters, got a glitch to warm up, and just, they're just fun discs. I don't think I'll actually throw it, but it's fun. I've added, actually, Toro to the bag because I just needed an overstable premium plastic guy, and also the pig is back. Not sure how much I'll use those, but I wanted to bring them in case there's a lot of wind. I've also, am gonna be playing around with the Pathfinder as compared to my Emac Truth. Don't know which one I'm gonna like. I kind of really want to like the Pathfinder over the Emac Truth, so if they fly similar, I think I might bag Pathfinders this year, but I think we're going Pathfinder today. Not 100% sure yet. I got one strike, got a Prodigy H7. Very flippy guy, like it a lot. By Firebird, and then four Destroyers for my distance drivers. I think a good score, honestly, is going to be maybe double digits, but I just want to honestly go and have fun because I'm a little sore. Uh, just for, I've been throwing, and I've been throwing with some new techniques, which have been making my forearms pretty sore, so hopefully we can just stay smooth, not try to overthrow anything, and just get the, the, get the dub, you know? <laughs> Obviously, why not? Also, this video is sponsored by Flippy Disc Golf. More about that after we get to the course. All right, so I went ahead and warmed up a little bit. It's honestly pretty nice out. I did not need this cold of clothes, but speaking of clothes, Honestly, Flippy Disc Golf makes some of the most comfortable hoodies that I've ever worn. I have this one. You've also seen one of the other ones, which kind of looks like it's got sprinkles on it, which I really like a lot. I wear both of these almost every day, especially as it's gotten colder out to play disc golf, because it just gives you a lot easier movement. They also make beanies here. They have like dad hats and stuff, which I really like as well, and then jerseys. I haven't been able to wear the jerseys a lot. Probably honestly should have brought one today, but the jerseys that they have are moisture wicking, super comfortable, really fun patterns, and they do a lot of custom stuff. You've probably seen them work with foundation, and swanky disc golf, as well as a lot of college teams. So if you have a business, a company, maybe just a club, there's no minimum orders on anything, and they have in-house graphic design, so they can help you out with the designs if you need anything like that. Head down to Flippy Disc Golf, link is in the description, and use my code for 10% off. It'll just honestly link that in. Thank you so much again, Flippy Disc Golf, for sponsoring this video. Hopefully, we shoot pretty well. I'm gonna go sign in for tags, warm up the putt a little bit, and uh, hopefully, play decent. Let's have some fun. So we got started here on hole number 12. It's a 340 foot par three, just straight ahead to the basket there. I decided to throw my Essence, which I'm not even sure if I'm really gonna bag, because last time I threw my Bandit, but there was a slight headwind. The wind was swirly all day, and I ended up flipping a little bit too much, hitting that tree. Probably should have disced up, I guess, to my strike, but left me with this kind of putt throw, and I was like, I'm full sendies today, baby. Not the best run in the world, and you really don't want to have a 25-footer staring at you to come back for the first putt, but when you can drain it like that, you're pretty happy with how it ends up. Just enough to not be a baby. Our second hole was 357 feet, just a pretty pure hyzer line. I decided to disc up to my destroyer instead of throwing my strike, even though I think both of them could have reached. Here we're really looking at the form, I really kind of swing through my body, throw it way up high, Leave myself with probably about a 35 foot putt, which I'm really not happy with because there's just so much hyzer. All right, so you guys might have seen yesterday's video where I talked a lot about uh, just like some form stuff I've been working on. I'm gonna start thinking about that in this round and try to implement it a little. It's not going well so far because I haven't been thinking too much, so. Skip in. Oh, nice. But it doesn't matter much. We try to score good, but work on form as well is really important in a round that kind of matters where I want to score, you know? So the main form thing that we're actually gonna be looking at is punching my off arm down. Or maybe not punching it, just leaving it at my side. But first we got this putt. Kind of felt decent out of the hand, but I mean the 40 footer there on the side of the hill, I'm really not great at footing that's on side hills. So I gotta work on that. Moves us into hole number 14, par par. This one's 540 feet, pretty downhill, not just a little bit downhill. And so I'm gonna take my Echo Star Destroyer. There is kind of like a headwind feel, but I feel like it's actually more left to right. But in my head, in the moment, I was thinking headwind. So I thought, give it a little bit of hyzer, it'll flip up a little and come back. So I did give it that little bit of hyzer. I did get my off arm down a little bit more, but it was very straight and pretty hard. And since it was more of a left to right wind, it really carried it to the right and didn't let it get back over. So we're left with an upshot here, trying to get close to the basket, ideally parking it, and I'm wanting to go through this little gap of the trees with my MB, a little turnover. Leaves my hand pretty decent form, but ends up on a hyzer to flat instead of a little bit of turnover, just to flex down, but hits a tree which keeps me about 40 feet just outside the circle. Nice 
I hate this hole. <laughs> and this hole is hole number 15. It's pretty short, it's 175 feet, but going straight through those trees is a no-go. So I'm taking my Toro up and over everything on kind of a pretty spike hyzer line. I don't quite put it on spike because I wanted to kind of drift it back to the left and still I'm about 20 feet deep, but honestly a pretty good shot. This is one that I feel like I should make basically 10 out of 10 times. I am having to straddle. I kind of would prefer to inline because that's what I'm working on right now. And I feel pretty confident with my inline today because I'm a little more tired and straddle is normally working for me when I'm not as tired as we can see here. And I actually had an interesting realization in that putt because I missed the putt, pretty disappointed at myself. And we'll talk about that here. Super interesting realization on that putt is I aimed at a chain the whole time until I went down and then I did not aim or focus at all anymore. So aim through the end of your putting stroke. Interesting. I, I always wonder why I miss when I aim. And I think it's because I don't actually finish my aim. So we're only one down through four holes on a lot of gettable holes, which moves us into hole number 16, 284 feet, close to 300. So I actually disc up to a pathfinder to take the right gap just to throw. And I honestly get my off arm down, felt pretty good about that shot, but it still feels weird on my form and my aiming is in 100% there. I did not like this shot, even though my card mates did. You can see that there, but I'm only maybe 15, 20, 25 feet. Really not bad. A little bit awkward with that tree right in front of me. Pretty happy to make that putt. It felt like it was going in all the way. Honestly, looking back at that, it looks like it wasn't going to, but it felt pretty good. Here we are, hole number 17, the Bomber 470. Should be a par three, but they called a par four for tags. Pretty decent shot, honestly. This one felt like one of my better like poles of the day. And I get it about 60 to 70 feet past where I was the last time I played this hole. So we're going to give it a run with the glitch. I know I said that I didn't want to bag the glitch, but to be completely honest with you, you'll see a couple more times. I kind of had a lot of fun with it. And obviously, just like on the first hole of the day, if you're going to run stuff, you need to be confident in your comebackers. Hole number 18 here, 333 feet down the hill to the right. I don't really know if you can actually see it. I haven't zoomed in yet, but I'm going to take my firebird on a forehand. I thought that was perfect. There was a slight left to right wind, a little bit ahead, so I thought it would stand it up a little, but I think it actually slowed it down slightly because I thought I was going to be like pretty much parked, but I wound up about 42 feet. There I was stepping it out. Got this straddle putt here, and what's interesting is that a commentator actually said that when I make my straddle putts, my right foot goes from right to left. Similar to how I think about my arm going from right to left. Nope. Oh, high height. Downhill on the sides of hills, not good for me. So I was thinking about that, but when you're on a hill, it's a little bit weird. But once again, if you can run the putt, make sure that you can make the comebacker. And that gives you the confidence to run those farther putts. And we're still bogey free. Hole number one here is 470 feet downhill. Strike that 459 feet. I was trying to give myself a little bit of extra credit for this. Not great shot, but we're between the Echo Star Destroyer, which I throw to the side here, and another Star Destroyer, which I know is slightly more stable. That's because there's a headwind left to right. So I'm going to throw this on Heiser, thinking it's going to pop up. I was really happy with that shot out of my hand, kept the nose angle really down, but that Star Destroyer was a little bit more stable than I thought it was going to be. It's my first day out here actually throwing them, and I'm about 80 feet behind the basket, and so I tried to give it another run with my glitch with a little Annie run, but you missed a cool shot with the glitch. Just right, just left side. I'm not lying, right? No, yeah, you're lying. Are you sure? Good. How much you guys want me to pay for that? <laughs> And this disc had a bad memory to get the last time. I'll be better for you, buddy. This disc is a P1, and we're going to throw it just trying to get it straight up the gap. Really not happy with that shot. Ended up kind of shanking it a little bit to the right. That was not very good enough. Huh? Still, though. Sorry, dude. Sorry. Bad memories are coming up. Maybe that's not the disc for this hole. Maybe it's not the disc for me. And honestly, I'm starting to think after having a few miscues with this P1, especially up here at elevation, it's just not quite the disc that might be for me, unfortunately. Leaves us with about a 60 foot putt, maybe. Really happy with that putt. Stoked to be able to make that and get another birdie. Moving on to hole number three here. It's 406 feet. Psych. That's just what Yuta says. It's actually like 330 feet uphill. So I'm honestly going to throw my Prodigy H7. I just got it in a mystery box video that you might have seen that one of my old patrons had put together for me. Checking the wind. It was super swirly, but just going to throw it hard on hyzer up the hill because it's going to climb the hill while it's flipping. Really good shot. Oh, oh my God. 
Honestly, walking up to this light, I have no idea how it didn't go in. Well, obviously, I mean, it just missed. But the fact that it's this far behind the basket really surprised me. So we have this putt. And honestly, this is where it starts to get a little stressful for my putting. And I'll explain why here. Good. That was nervy. I checked scores and got in my head because I'm like not leading. But if I birdie that one and then one more of these next two, I will be tied for the lead. Which I, I want to start checking scores more because I, I don't like this nervous feeling that I get. And I think it can push me. I just got to let it. And I got to learn to putt in those situations. Honestly, I've been hearing a little bit more about some of the really top level pros who do check scores. Like you hear Paul and he has just this crazy mentality that he can just get into this flow state. And it's something that I think could be useful to work on. This hole is downhill, just about 350 feet. I throw that same stable Star Destroyer, which I'm glad I figured out was stable because even going down the hill just on a hyzer skips right past the basket just a little bit behind. I have this putt now and I'm really feeling a little bit nervy about it and I'm also not great at uphill putts. Really frustrated with how that went and I'm going to explain why I missed and this is a good thing to realize. Out instead of up because up is out when you're putting uphill. Ah, that's a bad one. Let's get the next one. Really frustrated by that, but really want the bounce back. So hole number five here is about 330 feet. There's pretty much a straight line, but it's not great. So the big hyzer is the play if you have it. And I throw. Oh gosh. Oh, gosh. I really thought that I'd shake that straight into the tree. Otherwise, it was pretty much my line. This was my Echo Star Destroyer, and I landed honestly in a pretty solid spot, which I'm really happy about. Still a little nervy on these putts because I know that I'm wanting to get into this leading position and trying to follow scores to help them drive me and push me and having that be practiced right here where it doesn't really matter too much. Well, number six, 390 feet. I am taking that overstable or just that stable Star Destroyer that I've thrown a couple times now. Really have a really terrible form. Luckily though, this was filmed on a GoPro. So one of the cool features about the GoPro is you can uh, download media. So I'm gonna be able to watch that back. I'm pretty sure I didn't get my off arm down. So it pushed my body forward and into the ground. Not totally, but mostly. So good to see. Really happy that I was able to actually look at that, but it leaves us here where we're just gonna pitch up the glitch. I don't know why I'm still throwing the glitch, but I kind of love it. Glitch is kind of working today. I don't like it, I kind of hate it. Put me right underneath the basket with just a little flick of the wrist. Hole number seven here is just over 420 feet. The wind is pushing from the right to left, so we're gonna take my Echo Star Destroyer, and I actually voiced this over earlier. Hey, so I'm not actually voicing over yet. I'm literally just pre-cutting my clips, and literally this shot I thought was about to be my practice run-up, like I've had on a bunch of other shots, but it was just my actual shot. It was by far the slowest run-up. No spoilers, but it was my biggest drive of the day. What? So really stoked about that because it just means that there's just some more formwork to do, but it clicked in that moment, which I'm really happy about and left me with this putt. Have some balls. Really frustrated to not convert on that one because that would be such a good birdie. Over 420 feet. I'm not even sure how many people had gotten that one during the day. Actually, let me check. There were two birdies. Shout out Jake Peterson and Josh Kolbaba. Really good too. Wish I could have joined you. Hopefully next week. And one more shout out for Dennis here who just threw his hex on a forehand and just barely didn't get the ace. Really cool shot there. This is hole number eight, just over 300 feet. And I was choosing between my Envy and my Pathfinder. I'd been throwing my P1 or my Envy and feeling really good about it. But there was a slight tail, which I felt like could stable it out too much. And I'd rather just play the big hyzer. So I decided, hey, if I stall something out, it's gonna be a mid range and it'll glide back to the left a little bit better. The shorter putts are starting to feel a lot nervier because at this point, the leader is nine down with one hole left. So I'm just assuming that they're gonna get to 10 and I'm seven down with three holes left. So I know I need to get all of them in order for at their best case scenario, me to tie. And if they don't get the last hole, maybe I can win. So I throw my P1 here. I'm really calling for it to get back to the left because it leaves me with a putt that I have to straddle out really uncomfortable with really going to take my time because if I miss this I mean I'm basically in my head I'm not leading so there's a lot of pressure for me on this putt and I want to create these situations to get myself in a good tournament mode Really, really happy with that shot to have it just hit dead center. Here's hole number 10. It's pretty short. These last two I know are gettable and they should be gettable with a putter. I threw my envy, put it to about 10 feet. But Kyle, awesome card mate. 
pleasure playing with you stepped right in front of it so we're just going to be able to see the putt also for everyone who's been on the channel for a while you know what it means when i flip my putter i mean this is leagues of flip plays but normally if i mark it with a mini versus just throwing from it you know what that means hole number 11 i've checked scores i am nine down with one to play 10 down finished in the clubhouse is the number to beat now at tags whoever has the best tag coming in gets the best tag i have no idea what the other person's tag was but i'm stepping up with honestly my envy and i'm not really trusting my flex lines and there's a tree to beat on the right side and then i just look to the left and there's just a big old forehand gap i have not thrown forehand off the tee except for on hole number 18 so i'm not super confident about it deciding between my pig and my toro and because i want a little bit more predictable ground action i go for my r pro pig Pot. Now this is only my second time playing this course since I moved into town so I really did not know how good that shot was. I thought I was about 25 feet and had to make a long putt but we just had about 10 to 15 feet to tap in to get to 10 down. Really, really happy with that performance. To get double digits, just like I said, I came in with the 120 tag and they came in with the 180 so I get the high tag of the day, 15. And my game is definitely not feeling there, especially my distance and a lot of things. There were like three circle one putts missed on the table here. We're really trying to focus on the positives of a really good round. Shout out to all my card mates, Dennis, Griffin, and Kyle. Tags is always a blast. And a big shout out and thank you to Flippy Disc Golf for sponsoring today's video. If you want some sweatshirts that you'll never want to take off, go down to the link in the description. I feel like my bag is kind of getting dialed. Maybe, hopefully I'm adding a little bit of power and things might change a little bit. I still have about four or five weeks until my season starts, so there'll be a lot more field work, a lot more tags, just getting myself into tournament mentality, so subscribe for more of these videos. But if you can't get enough of these type of videos, I played a 36-hole tournament with one stupid brick of a disc right down here, or my last tags match at a different course in Denver right down here. Okay, I love you guys. Bye.